I'm Adair Margo, the founder of the Tom Lee Institute. Tom Lee was a native El Pasoan, born in 1907, uh, went to the Art Institute of Chicago, and trained as an artist who became not just a muralist, but also an illustrator, a World War II artist correspondent, a novelist who illustrated his own books, a portrait painter, a landscapist, he really transcended category, and uh, he was from El Paso and found his nourishment here. I'm Holly Packard Cobb. I'm the executive director of the Tom Lee Institute. Tom Lee is best known for probably his murals and being a World War II artist correspondent. He did several murals during the New Deal period, and his mural, The Pass of the North, is arguably one of the finest murals of the New Deal period. However, he's also well known as a writer. Uh, two of the books that he wrote were on the bestseller list with Steinbeck and Hemingway and were made into movies. So it's hard to kind of pigeonhole Tom Lee as only an artist because he was also an extraordinary writer as well. The World War II exhibit is really um, an extraordinary opportunity to see Tom Lee's World War II art. He was the most published artist of World War II and he had over seven spreads in Life magazine which was a, the most popular magazine at the time. And Tom Lee uh, really felt that it was his duty to report back to the people on the home front uh, what was actually happening during the war. So he portrayed um, people in a way that showed them in their work, in combat, as well as uh, all different branches of the military, the Navy, the Army, the Marines, and the Air Force. It is a compilation of uh, what he did over four years, traveling over 100,000 miles. Because he had written books and was an illustrator, Life Magazine knew there was an artist of note in El Paso and asked him to do an illustration of a cavalry soldier out at Fort Bliss before the war began. They were doing articles on soldiers gearing up for war. That one portrait led to him being the first artist commissioned by Life to cover the war in different theaters. And this is a compilation. All of that art, there were 80 some odd pieces, were given to the U.S. Army Center for Military History by Life magazine, and they're housed at Fort Belvoir. 27 of those works were broken out and uh, now have traveled to uh, the El Paso Museum of Art. Tom Lee is such an important figure to this region, he's really worth celebrating. And when we have introduced Tom Lee in the schools through curricula, it has given students a new sense of pride in this region. A lot of students think, oh, there's not something great about this region, I want to leave. But when they are introduced to Tom Lee and his art and writings, all of a sudden they begin to see this beautiful borderland region through Tom Lee's eyes. I'd started the Tom Lee Institute in 2007, which was his centennial. He had passed away by that time. But I wanted to ce celebrate his centennial. And then we formalized the proclamations that took place in Washington, D.C., in the state of Texas, and in El Paso, declaring at that time, July, because his birthday was in July, uh, Tom Lee Month. We've since changed it to October to coincide with celebration of our mountains. Tom Lee Month is basically an opportunity to uh, celebrate the impact of Tom Lee on this region. It's an opportunity for people to be able to see this region's history and culture through the eyes of an extraordinary artist. And we celebrate that in uh, a variety of ways. And we attempt to draw in new audiences by doing different kinds of events that appeal to different kinds of people. If one wants to know more about Tom Lee and our activities at the Institute, you can go to TomLee.com and you'll find all things Tom Lee there. And you can also go online and some of his books have been reprinted by UT Press. So you can go online, read The Wonderful Country, read The Brave Bulls, uh, and you can find some of his out of print books that we hope ultimately to bring back. Tom Lee had a reverence for life. And his work is about life, it's about experiences in life. He saw the value of his paintings as what remained of life.